another kill I missed. I missed a kill last game as well, and I was quite confused. Alright, um, Windrunner is going to be... He does have his boots now. Probably going to finish up the phase boots next. He needs about 300 gold here, and then he's going to have his phase finished. And then he's going to have absolutely no trouble last hitting here. So, Earthshaker wants to make something happen against this Crystal Maiden with that uh, Lone Druid, but they, they do have familiars up. That's going to make a big oh, contribution if they can get those stuns off, they, and they're going to have sight as well. Here comes the VS, going to swing around, going to have a stun down in just a second. The the, the uh, armor, minus armor goes down. Both bats landing on the spear bar. What the hell is happening? They're just going to disengage on this gank, I guess. Um, they didn't want to go for it. Uh, their shaker's a little low. Um, the Visage has arcane boots, interestingly, but a little bit out of position. And the Venomancer are dropping some wards. It's a level 1 ward, actually. It's not a level 2 ward. I don't know if he just landed it late or he's going to a different build, but he's going to last hit that ogre there. Pretty nice move. Um, and it looks like he's... Wow, he's going poison first. Very interesting. He goes le 1 level of wards and level 3 poison does 15 damage per second. I think that's pretty a, good, a pretty good idea against the... The Nerubian Weaver, by all means, because uh, he is going to be weaving in and out of combat with that invisibility. So if you can drop that uh, that little blast on him, I mean, that's that's a good uh, 100 damage of magic damage. So going to be initiating on this Crystal Maiden. Slow going down on him. The first bat survives. The second bat survives with nice nuke follow-up. Uh, Schwan is going to get that last hit on that Crystal Maiden with those big nukes. Avengers is going to survive with 13 HP unless they chase him down. I don't know if it's going to happen. The, the Power Shot does not actually land. It does hit the Necrolite, though. Um, Shackle Shot going on the Earthshaker, and they might get a follow-up here. A little bit of auto-attacking from the Spirit Bear, but I don't know if it's going to happen. They need one more last hit, and Nice Bear does get the last hit there. That's so huge for their carry hero there. Um, and he's so happy that he got that, undoubtedly. Windrunner trying to harass these bats and do some damage and try to pick up that 100 gold, but not going to happen there. Bats, both bats are going to land and do damage. Pugna has not actually roamed yet. He's just pushing a lot mid. If we look at his CS, he's sitting on 26 CS. Uh, Sentinel here is actually not doing very good on CS. 26 here for the Pugna, 14, 15 on the Weaver. He only has 15 CS, though he does have zero neutrals and uh, 34 on the Visage. And for the Scourge team, we have 40 on the Venomancer and 38 on on that Windrunner, very, very high CS for a Venomancer. You almost never see him CSing this hard unless he's mid, but he's pretty much had a solo lane this whole time. He doesn't even have defensive warding. I mean, they could have spotted any roamers going this way with that aren't using dust. But currently, what is he going to pick up? He has 1,100 gold, probably going to go for a really fast Vanguard. Um, that's my expectation. Going to pick up a Vitality Booster right now. Going to sell a GG, and there it is, the Vitality Booster. 970 HP on the Venomancer. It's going to go really fast Vanguard, and he's going to have pretty good survivability. Uh, the main reason you get a Vanguard on a Venomancer in this position, okay, since he is a ranged hero, it doesn't benefit him as much. But you're going to have those bugs hitting him for very, very low damage. And uh, when you do damage block, very low damage, it blocks attack. before the armor is enabled. And uh, it's a very awesome item. So, uh, Silver going for the pretty typical Silver build that I've seen on a lot of people lately is that Phase Boots on the main hero. Looks like they're going to be initiating. Here comes the block. It is going to fully block, wall him off. Second stun going down, third blast going down. Another stun happening on the Silver. So much bad damage, but he's not going to make it. He tries to survive, but it's just not going to be enough. The Lone Druid does go down there. So nice, really nice uh, organization by the Sentinel team. This is why they picked up this trialing. It's just so effective uh, for getting kills and stuff like that. So they're going to be diving on this Lich, possibly calling for a save. It looks like they're going to back off for just a moment. But here they go. They're going to be going after it. Visage is going to be going after this. They do a bat sight. I'd be really surprised if he makes it out of here. Look how much damage those bats do. He had absolutely no chance of surviving that. And the Windrunner is now here to make something happen. He wants to get a Shackle Shot off, uh, but Earthshaker has really good positioning. Beautiful stun at the right time. Going to do so much damage to the Windrunner. He pops his wand at the last second, trying to stun the Earthshaker. But here comes the auto-attacking, and the Earthshaker is going to get that last hit, as well as the VS going down. Silver doing some nice, nice orb walking. He does so much damage with those phases, but look at that ult, or that nuke by the Necrolite. Going to do like 400 damage, I think, to that Silver. Almost completely destroyed him. He was down to like 5 HP and there was another follow-up. Gonna kill that Zillabar. It's currently 8-2. to two. The Sentinel team is rocking this game right now. What a great game so far. The only saving grace for the Scourge team currently is this Venomancer. He is level 7. He does have his Vitality Booster. His farm has been pretty great. Picking up another CS. He's level 8. If he hits level 11 and they have a first major team fight, he's gonna make a ridiculously big contribution to the team. Honestly, like, if you have a level 2 uh, Venomous or uh, level 2 Poison Nova gonna land down on the enemy team. It's a level 4 poison there. 20 damage a second per hit. That's so fantastic. A little bit of harassing on the Venomancer, but I don't think he's gonna dive on it. Is under yeah, he's just using these wards to scout. They are level 2 now, so he's gonna go max poison with and then max wards. Kind of a cool build. Usually you see, almost always you see max wards. I haven't seen a Gale, um, a Gale poison build in a while. Gonna swap 
No, he's not. He's only level four. Stun gonna go down. Very long range stun. There goes the stun. Weaver's gonna try to get the pick off here. He's gonna be ulting and putting down big nukes. I didn't even see Pugna here. Both of those here is taking big damage, but the Venge teeping out very, very smart there. He knew it would have been tough for him to make it out of there. Windrunner wants to get a kill. Gonna wind run through this decrep fight. Doesn't even notice that there's a decrep going on. He's gonna power shot, but miss a couple more auto attacks. He survives. He survives that. He did not get the kill. The power shot missed. The Nether War drains his mana too much, and he's not able to chase any farther. So. Uh, no, he's actually found a mana. What am I talking about? But very crazy. I cannot believe that happened. I, I'm very surprised the Pugna survived. Very, very cool. Stun going down the Windrunner. Once again, they're out of position, taking big nuke damage from the Decrep Blast combo with that Fissure as well. So um, all these Scourge heroes just being a little too ballsy. Um, all of a sudden, there's three enemy heroes, and they do their combos and take them out. So that is pretty pretty significant on, on in this game so far. Okay, so the Lone Druid's gonna be heading top with these Phase Boots and that Wand. Uh, Necrolite sitting on the Arcane Boots with that Hedras of Rejuvenation and the Ventral Spear sitting on Boots, the Gauntlet, and that Magic Wand as well. So, uh, pretty good items for 11 minutes and 46 seconds on that Ventral Spirit. It's a pretty good contribution. Um, he's gonna be able to possibly survive his swaps, which is always kind of nice. If he can get another stun off during the battle, it can actually make a pretty big difference. Crystal Maiden is going to be doing a little bit of harassing brilliant, or excuse me, a little bit of harassing Crystal Nova. And I have seen this sometimes in pubs, people just say rock the aura, maxing the aura first, but um, these players are going for a little bit higher of uh, disables as well, so that, that is pretty cool because it could make a big contribution to those team fights if they are disabled, especially for the Nerubian Weaver. Um, you want that ice block to be possibly a lot higher than the, uh, the Nova because it will disable them quite a bit longer if uh, you skill it up. So um, Venomancer once again CS in bottom. You can look at his CS totals. He's at 52 currently and he's at 180 gold. So undoubtedly going to be getting his uh, Ring of Health next I assume and his Stout Shield. And once he picks those up it's going to be kind of tough to kill him in battles unless you of course get dives, unless he gets dived by three heroes and completely nuked down by his own tower. So uh, we'll see how that ends up working out for him. Lone Druid swinging top, doesn't have any damage protection at this point, but uh, small engagement going on bottom, I'll look at Lone Druid in just a second. A couple wards going down, those look like level 2 wards happening, so they don't have super good last hitting power, but they do have about 200 HP now, so they can tank a decent amount from a creep wave, so um, if we look at the Lone Druid, he's at 1200 gold, 1270 gold currently. And Ken is uh, about 1,600, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2,600 away from his Relic. Once he picks up that Relic, his farming is going to be significantly faster, but Scourge is going to be roaming top towards this Vengeful Spear. I don't know if they spot it. Yes, they did spot him with a ward here. They know that these heroes are going to top. They're going to be doing a counter gank. Really, really cool move here. If they find that Vengeful Spear, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Looks like the... Uh, the Windrunner illusion just hanging out mid, but it did divert their traffic a little bit. Unfortunately, that did get spotted by the ward, so a little bit of sloppy play. They should have just left that illusion. They're checking out for this uh, Vengeful Spirit on the gank path right here, but um, unfortunately, um, yep, they're going to spot that as an illusion, and uh, they had a pretty good chance of getting that bench down, but I think they're going to be roaming towards this Visage, but he's... Uh, Apparently they're reporting heroes missing or something. I don't know if they spotted them here, but Visage playing very defensive right now. Got his bats in a good position. Is unlikely to get ganked. And once again, Venno's still laning against this Weaver 14 minutes in. Nobody, someone hasn't told them that it's not the laning phase anymore. This ward getting picked off by the Earthshaker. Doing pretty good damage considering, I mean, 50 damage for something that just costs a little bit of mana. It does give him gold, but um, I don't know. That, that, that amount of damage can actually change games, especially when you have about six of those <laughs> wailing on an Earthshaker or something like that. Or putting the wards on the visage, or having like the the poison damage over time on the visage, it's gonna just absolutely destroy his armor and break it down really fast. But now we just have one Veno with some wards trying to defend this push, and it's just not gonna happen. Stun going down the Venomancer. We might have follow up. Is he gonna swap? No swap gonna happen, unfortunately. Too bad for the skirt or the Sentinel team. That was actually level three bugs. I think he must. Uh, he's in level nine. He has nine abilities, obviously. So he'd have four for his Kuchi, one for his ult. Yeah, he's gonna have. That makes sense. Level 3 bugs right now. But he does have a Germinate. Maybe not. I'm kind of confused. But uh, Pugna sitting top. He's got an Invis. He does go for that fast point booster. It's going to give him a lot of good HP. The bear getting summoned back. Taking pretty good damage though. They do want to push this pretty hard. But um, bear is could get nuked down by this Nether Blast here. He's just about to die. He does resummon him. Nice play by Zao there. 
Um, gonna keep him alive. Invis being popped by the Oblivion and a team fight going on bottom. Looks like Vino ult all these heroes, but he is missing from the fight. I assume he is dead. Uh, Visage taking so much damage from these two abilities. If he goes down low enough, he I think he's gonna survive. Hit the ult did go away. Venomous scale at this point is not gonna do big damage. And even the Weaver gonna book it out of there. Gonna be picking up a possible vitality booster. Pugna getting a kill against this Crystal Maiden with support from the Vengeful Spirit. Nice team fights from the Sentinel team. They're just rocking currently, picking up more and more kills. It's gonna make such a huge impact on this game. It's 12 to 3. They are stomping these enemy heroes. They are doing a really good job against CCM here. And Loon Druid's going to be going back to the jungle and picking up a level 1 Rabbit currently. And if you look at the damage of his bear, he's just one one level short of a max synergy, so not a big deal. But I'm going to get some good auto attacking in here, doing pretty big creep damage with those phase boots. Uh, Loon Druid already has pretty good attack speed, in my opinion, and his animation is fabulous. Um, so um, it is nice to keep him in regular mode here. He's going to go back up top with this creep wave and clear those out for some CS. Though I think Weaver has the same idea, very close on a Vanguard. He doesn't have boots yet, but he's pretty content with just having his Kuchi to get around. Going to grab that Illusion Rune and head swing top, and I or swing mid, excuse me. And I think they're going to be initiating on this ve uh, this Venomancer. Big chain stun's going down. He is so tanked, but he just got absolutely shot down there by those combos. Really, really nice move. Going to be chasing the Crystal Maiden and this Lich as well. Uh, possibly chasing him down. Nuke's going down. First Nuke going to land. Need one or two more auto attacks, but the Weaver was frozen. Going to pick off that Crystal Maiden instead dead and now they're chasing after the windrunner but he's gonna book it out of there with that wind run ability nuke da going down but not actually doing any damage he must have timed that just badly um for his souls his souls must have just completely disappeared uh the lone druid not able to make a lot of stuff happen this game he is has been getting ganked and there the sentinel advantage just kept rolling in i wish this game was less of a stomp unfortunately the last game i casted was not a stomp it was a pretty cool game but uh this game is not over yet and there's still a lot of time on the clock, and uh, the, the Scourge team could definitely still come back from this. So we'll see what ends up happening. It would be very high order by all means. Not going to be that easy. But it's possible. They do have a lone druid. And if he does pick up that Radiance, um, could possibly make a lot happen. Especially against his Weaver. Radiance is a nice counter against any Invis hero. Because you're constantly doing damage to them no matter what. So looks like the Weaver is going to get that last hit there. That's about 450 gold for him. The Venomancer is going to try to initiate, but he missed his Gale, unfortunately, on that Earthshaker. Stun going down, going to hit that Windrunner and stop this push by quite a bit. Bugs landing down on a lot of these heroes. Going to Shackle Shot the Visage to his own bat there. Ult going down by the uh, by the uh, Venomancer, doing big, big damage to the Necroline. Nice swap from the Vengeful Spirit, swapping his ally out of danger. Chain Frost doing quite a bit of damage. Going to pick up that Visage or that Vengeful Spirit there. Bear wants to get this Earthshaker a little bit auto attacking here, and he might go down one more hit. The Scourge, the tower does actually land that hit on him. And the Nurbian Weaver is going to back up. The Sentinel team um, didn't do quite as well there as they had in previous engagements. Lone Druid make an, made a nice contribution. Played kind of dangerously by sitting in bear form, but able to do a lot more damage there with his ranged attacks. Pugna just about picking up his Aghanim Scepter, and I think that's a great item to fight to pick up against a Lone Druid and a Venomancer. If he does get trapped, at the very least, he can Mana Drain, or HP Drain from the Spear Bear um, non-stop. Do they even have stuns? I mean, it's pretty much just Crystal Maiden and Windrunner providing their team stuns. Um, I'm pretty sure every time the Entangle goes down, it'll interrupt his Life Drain. But he can always just cast again, assuming he has mana, so... Now he is sitting, doing a little bit of life training in the jungle. I love this uh, method for picking up um, CS and uh, pretty much just non-stop draining. I mean, it's not a lot you, the Centaurs can do. It is going to run out of there. He's going to blast and clean up this creep wave. Um, Pugna is just such great int gain. He's never going to run out of mana. And I absolutely love um, picking up these ancient creeps with these uh, with these wards. So um, he does take a little bit of damage here from this jungle stalker. 